Um, hello everyone. It's a, it's a great honor to be here as a invited speaker. Um, thank you for those who voted on me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So, well, it looks like I'm the only person from Japan in this group, right? So, <laughs> maybe many of you don't know who I am. So, let me introduce myself a little bit to begin with. This is my name, um, in English and in Japanese. And I'm from Tokyo, Japan. And as, as I said, probably I'm the only person from Japan this year. But I heard the last year the language creator, Max Kinovi, for this conference, right? So, you might be missing this guy. <laughs> but no problem, this year I came instead of him. <laughs> You see, man's name spells in Japanese like this. And his family name, Matsumoto, shares the same kanji character with my name. Actually, actually, we share the most important one for him, which we pronounce Mats. So, you see, obviously, I'm also a kind of Mats. <laughs> But, but please don't call me Mats. <laughs> you can just call me Akira. That's my first name. So, oops. Anyway, um, a bit more about myself. Um, I'm a Matsuda on Gate Club, a underscore Matsuda on Gate Club. Um, a mirror of these things, um, Ruby language, Rails, framework, and ML. I authored these Ruby gems such as Kaminari, Zekere, Shenor, and so on. Um, yes, I'm the founder of Masaksu.rb, which is the most active Japanese Ruby community. Actually, we meet up on every Tuesday, every Ruby Tuesday. So we did like more than 200 meetups so far. And I'm a member of the organizing team of Ruby and Kaiki. So today I brought a bit of news as a Kaiki organizer. The Ruby Kaiki 2014, next year, would probably be um, held around September. So please schedule on your iPad or <laughs> I mean, I came to Texas <laughs> to, to, to speak here. So next year, it's your turn to come to Japan, right? So a question for you. Who here are you think yourself as a Rails engineer? Please raise your hand. One. OK. A lot. Thank you. Um, so, let me start my talk with a quotation that defines what is engineer. Do you know this guy? This, this person is a committer of both Ruby core and Linux kernel. He's a monster. <laughs> yeah, he's an extremely wonderful programmer. And he shared his episode on Twitter. One day he talked to an engineer from Boeing, the aircraft company, and he introduced himself as a software engineer. Then the Boeing man really got angry and said, hey, hey, you shall not call yourself an engineer unless you're working on engines like me. Got <laughs> <laughs> it? So, literally, that guy works for engines, and he said that we software engineers are false engineers. <laughs> but very luckily, we still have a chance to be an engineer. Because <laughs> probably the Boeing man didn't know, but off framework, Rails also has engines. So 
So let's hack on browse engines. Then we'll be able to be um, genuine software engineers, right? So, what are engines? This is uh, engine is the Rails plugin, and engines can be considered miniature applications that provide functionality to their Rails applications. I cited this from Rails guys. Um, thank you. Thank you, Ryan, for the writer. So, some of you might remember that there had been a plugin platform called Engines in, I guess, Rails 1 era that provides, for example, like login engine or something. But this one is something different. Actually, uh, Rails Engine is a is a kind of Rails plugin. I said engine is a Rails plugin, and Rails plugin is actually nothing but a gem in Rails 3 and 4. So, so firstly, let's explore Rails plugin from bottom up in order to understand how it works. Right? So, here's a Rails application. So, first thing we need for an engine is the gem spec, because I like said a plugin is a gem. So, the gem spec should be like this. Um, this is the simplest gen spec. A gen spec at, at the minimum requires its name and its region. So let me just copy and paste this. So it's ready to bomb. Thank you. <laughs> so, now it's bundle, and the bundle has been successfully bundled, and I can only see it zero, right? Check it out. the gem is properly loaded, let's check the load path. Because RubyGem um, adds the loaded gem into the load path. So.
Yes. <laughs> so, okay. Well, the plugin, this plugin, doesn't do anything. Right. So, even does not have the lib directory in that should be loaded. So, next, let's implement a feature. This should be actually quite useful, useful plugin. That every time you start up any kind of server or console or whatever, it says hello to you. <laughs> it makes you happy. <laughs> so now that I created a jam, um, I'm gonna dig a, deep, a bit deeper into its internal to see how it works. Uh, RubyGen has the load directed into the load path, as I said. And then someone calls the LSRB, LRC.RB file somehow. That's why the hello world shows up, right? So let's see who called LSRC.RB. You can check it like this. I, I don't do this because I, I don't have enough time to do this. But, um, this shows that uh, the caller was bundler, bundler's required function. So, seeing this, this method, uh, it just calls kernel.require with uh, file argument, and file argument was gem dependencies auto require or dependency name. As I didn't set anything to auto require to read it, so. It just requires the name. So it's equivalent to require LSRC, the plugin's name. That's why, uh, and uh, since the lib directory was included in the load path, so finally Ruby could find LSRC lib LSRC dollar and loads it. Then it prints out hello. So, so far this was just a demonstration of how Ruby James works, right? So, and now let's add a real specific behavior. But, yes, it's so easy. Just put something like this into your, your uh, some Ruby file that should be checked, would be loaded. But why, why this code? Just inheriting Rails, rail type. Why this um, inheriting rail type? adds the initializer buffer. This actually does add an initializer for this, this rail gem. And in this case, it, it prints initializing maybe after the application is initialized process. So why, why don't we just have to explicitly like register the initializer proc or something into the system global variable or something. Why why does just this work? This is because um, when you inherit per the rail side, it calls rail size inherits it and um, then adds it the child class into something, some array of some classes. Then, your application, when your application calls initialize, then um, it does a lot of things, and finally calls rail size new, and inside rail size new, it, it loads the rail size subclasses, right? So, 
<laughs> this way, it knows um, it can collect the subclasses without like explicitly um, defining the, the whole or something, right? So anyway, I'm not going to dig more deep because the main topic is engine. So Rails engine is constructed with these things. So the biggest difference between Rails engine and plugin is an engine is a plugin, is a gem, but it, it can contain some sort of application models, controllers, views, config routes, etc. And an engine should contain a subclass of Rails engine. In this example, we have my engine, engine.rg. So let's create a simple class that says like this. What's, what's going to happen again if we inherit the uh, engine class? Well, the engine class is inherited, Ruby invokes um, the inherited block here, and, um, and the engine takes its, its file location, file name from the call stack. And, and then stores the path into the engine's class instance variable that is uh, called from. And the child class is not actually used here. So that means that means uh, we do not need the name class. Actually it can be This is still an engine. And again, what's important is to, just to call engine inherited. So we don't need a class object. And I'm um, named class object. And, and, and now that the class has no name, it doesn't have to be namespace on the module, right? So this is the smallest rail thing. So now that we made it an engine, it should be able to contain models or controllers, as I told you. So let's try that. Let's put a simple Ruby class like this, it just says foo, and put it in. works. So, what happened here was uh, engine found 
the food plants inside the model and um, they loaded the loaded the plants without being required. I mean, how could Rails found the food plants without calling required? First, the model directory was added into the load path, and second, the model's directory was added to the engine class eager load path. But I'm not going to describe in detail about eager load and auto load because <laughs> it's a bit off topic and you know, it's so complex. <laughs> so, just make sure that. It was added into a hero. So I bring it out. This engine classes an eager load path, and it turns out the model directory. Because I created a directory and put the file in it. So, uh, I'm going to skip this because I, I think I have no time. But, um, In the same manner, we, we can add a config routes and a controller and do what we want. Like it should just act like a Rails application. I think you can guess what's gonna happen, so I'm gonna skip it. So that's it. That that's how Rails engines work. And back to the original argument. Now now that I proved that an engine has this subquest Rails engine, um that the model inside of engine could be loaded from the parent application, right? That engine is, is a gem that can contain models and controllers and that works like a tiny Rails application. So, this is the end of the problem. Now you know that Rails engine is a very simple but useful feature, so I'm going to show you how this could actually be used in our applications. So this is my first example. My first Rails engine was called Kamnari. Um, I created a Azuration plugin as my first Rails engine. I created this around Rails 3.0.0, maybe before the first release. So as far as I know, the this was the second Rails engine in the world. The first one was Jose's um, device. I guess mine was the second one. So why I chose the engine as the platform? Because Rails engine can contain controllers, models, views, helpers, and pagination library consists of model extension and helpers and views. So, I thought it was quite natural to implement as an engine, right? So, yes, that's how I chose the platform. And this is how Kaminari um, directory structure looks like. It has helpers and views as just like normal Rails application, and and has some. Some logics in the directory. And actually, the current version is so complex, so to get the design concept, I'm going to show you the very first release. This was the first release.
was very this one and here in laser artery. Use for in and fuse. So, so this was the active record of for me. In short, um, uh, I mean it's it's very short, but it's sort of uh, very tricky code. So, and as, as for how this works, I'm, I'm not going to explain <laughs> because it's again off topic. Um, it kind of Extends active records each subclass. But, yeah, I'm not going to talk about that. So, instead, you can find several write ups about how this plugin works on the internet. So, if you're interested, please take a look at these articles. And instead, let me excuse a little bit about the gem's name. Um, I know that the name Kaminari is a bit hard for you to memorize or pronounce. Actually, um, I tried to find a more like English name, like Beijing something or something Beige, but you know every possible name was already take, took, taken at that time. So my friend HSBT named it Kaminari. Probably inspired by nobody, and well, the community, the word means thunder or lightning in Japanese. Um, and actually, the gem had been mentioned by several online media, like Wells Cast or Ruby Five, but and they say like Kaminari. The, the sound was indeed. Slightly different from Hollis. So um, I brought a correct sound from Japan. <laughs> Open the words. Daughter speaking. <laughs> and she was two years old. Um, I recorded this. <laughs> so, this is the press. <laughs> oh, one more thing about coming out. Um, the next version will be 0 0.15, <laughs> which will hopefully come in soon. So, yes, I have only 10 minutes left. So the next topic is multiple engines. Uh, the previous version of, I mean, the, the engine had some problem like, uh, like this. It kind of the models or controllers inside easily could conflict between engines or with sometimes with the mania. So. The solution. Since Rails v1, we have we have isolated engine like mountain engine, mountable engine. These are same thing with different names. So we can break a mountable engine like this, and it looks like this. We have another method called isolate engines inside the engine. So what can a mountable engine do? It can provide safely namespaced models, controllers, etc. It can be mounted onto the parent Rails application on certain URL, and it can refer the parent application from controllers, views, 
and Romania. So, real world examples. I brought two examples that I created. One is entity relation diagram. Uh, you can find it on this URL. I developed this during RealCon last year, I think. So, it was made in Austin. <coughs> and it's a mounted engine that loads the main apps models and draws the entity relation diagram on the browser. Let me show. I guess you have no more. It's a big one. It draws a entity relation diagram, and we can add the model from here like this. Um, for example, add a column. Pushing this button, it runs with the my rate like this, and how it shows uh, the relation. And you can also drag the model. <coughs> you can save the positions of these models. So it's different from the PDF generation models, right? And you can also change. You can do any kind of this kind of demon manipulate.
do we, we need to do so. So one time. draws a diagram like this. Um, you see, I didn't do any documentating, documenting or extra programming to draw this. Just the plugin does it. Program automatically generates this from the right spec. Right? The yellow yellow line is I guess get red one is post and this one is redirect. You can see them. Right. <coughs> Fine. I wanted to introduce one more gem, but I think of the time. Two minutes, okay. Let me do it. Let's run to another one. This reports the browser's action. Plugin memorizes what I did and it outputs as a happy birthday. 
You don't need to handwrite these things in, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay.